Okay, so now we understand how to specify what the what the sequential device is supposed to do. We understand there's going to be a set of flip-flops that are going to store the present state, and we need to have some sort of combinational logic that's going to generate the next state inputs. Uh, what we need to think about now is a harder task, and that is how to design the next state the next state logic. We call it the next state decoder. Well, this is going to come in several steps. Uh, the first step is going to be right here. We're going to go from the present state into the next state. Now, we understand that there are three ways of representing the sequential device. This is only one of them, uh, is to, to show the present state, and for each one of them we can correspond to the next state. Regardless of how you're given the system, whether it's in words or as a state diagram, I would say convert it into this table so that we can progress on to the next step. What we want to do now is we want to look at the individual bits. So I'm going to look here at how does the most significant bit change uh, from the present state to the next state. Well, it doesn't really change. It stays at zero. So it goes from zero and it stays at zero. We're going to call that a transition from zero to zero. For the least significant bit, I see that it's going to transition from zero to one. So I'll call that a transition from zero to one. Looking here at the most significant bit, transitioning from 0 to 1, that's where this one comes from, and then this one's transitioning from 1 to 0. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm breaking up the two bits. Of course, if the system were more than two bits, I'd have, I'd have more than two sets of, of transitions on each row, and I'm considering exactly what happens to that particular bit. Uh, I should mention this section uh, of, of today's lesson is pretty dense. There's a lot of information coming at you pretty fast, so you might need to come back and watch the video a couple of times to see exactly how each step uh, of the process works. Here the step is I'm breaking, it, I'm breaking the numbers up into bits, and I'm thinking about what is the transition that happens to each of those bits. Now you might say zero to zero, that's not a transition, that's just staying the same. Well, it's kind of a transition that we're, we're just basically saying, well, it's transitioning from a zero to a zero, it's not changing, but it takes just as much work to ensure that it doesn't change as it would, for example, to transition from zero to one, to ensure that it does change. So to go from zero to zero, I want to think about that one in particular. There are two ways that that can happen. Either we can hold, which will keep whatever the original value was, or we could reset, which will cause the output to go to zero regardless of what the input used to be. So if the input, I'm sorry, if the output used to be a zero and we want it to go to a zero, we can either reset or we can hold. And after the transition takes place, we won't know which of those happened. Uh, the reset and the hold will appear to be exactly identical to us, so it really won't make a difference. So we can, we can refer to this as reset slash hold, or we could think of it as r slash h. So we're going to need some abbreviations because there's going to be a lot of information flowing here. So we're going to think of it as r slash h. If we want to transition from 0 to 1, we can either set, which will cause the output to go to 1 regardless of what it used to be, or we could toggle, which will flip whatever the output used to be. We'll refer to that as set slash toggle or just s slash t. If we want to go from 1 to 0, well then we could either reset, which would cause the output to go to 0, or we could toggle, which would flip the output. That'll be known as reset slash toggle or r slash t. And then if we want to quote unquote transition from 1 to 1, well then we're going to go set slash hold, or we're going to say s slash h. Set would cause the output to go to 1 regardless of what it used to be, and hold would simply keep the current value of the output. So here we have a state transition table, and, and really what this is showing is that uh, whichever of the four types of transitions that you're looking for, these are the conditions that will cause that particular transition to take place. So what we can do is we can take that information and add a new, a new pair of columns to our table. So I have here the present state and the next state. I've kind of broken those two transition columns up into um, the two transition sets of information into two different columns, one for the most significant bit, one for the least significant bit. If we had three bits in our number, we would have to have three columns for the transitions. And then I look each of these transitions up in the table above. This table right here, 0 slash 0, well, I can do that with a reset or a hold. So 0 slash 0 from the most significant bit becomes reset slash hold for the most significant bit. 0 slash 1, look it up up here, set slash toggle. So that's where we get the set slash toggle right here. Uh, scooting down here, we get 1, one uh, pointing to 1. That's a set or a hold. So here we see that it's a set or a hold. So this is sort of uh, just simply doing a lookup of whichever transition it is that we desire, what condition would lead to that transition. Uh, what, what needs to be the, the, the uh, function, the function that's being performed by the particular flip-flop that would lead a transition uh, that we're, the, of such as the one that we're looking for.
Now we also remember that we're talking about JK flip-flops here. And in that JK flip-flop, 0, 0 corresponds to hold, 0, 1 corresponds to reset, 1, 0 corresponds to set, and 1, 1 corresponds to toggle. We've, we've seen that when we talked about the JK flip-flop, we understand that that's the way that the JK flip-flop works. So we're going to add one more uh, uh, level of discussion here. This means that hold is triggered by 0, 0 where the first bit here corresponds to the J input and the second bit corresponds to the K input. Reset is caused by a 0, 1, J is 0, K is 1. Set is caused when J is 1 and K is 0, and toggle is caused when J and K are both 1. So if I want a reset, a reset would be a 0, 1. If I want to hold, that'll be a 0, 0. But if I'm willing to accept either a reset or a hold, then I'm willing to accept either a 0, 1 or a 0, 0. So the first bit must be 0. In both cases, that first bit is a 0. But the second bit, I don't care. The second bit can be either a 0 or a 1. So I represent this as, uh, as an x, the don't care. We talked about don't cares before when we, when we looked at Carnot maps. So reset, hold, a combination of either reset or hold could be represented by jk inputs of 0 and x. j must be 0, but x can be either value. So that, that paragraph might be the most confusing part of today's lesson. Uh, it, might, it might be worth your time to go back and, and study it again or, or flash back uh, a minute and listen to this part of the video again. Let's look at what happens with set and toggle. Remember that set and toggle, we, we might need this, this combination, for example, if we wanted to go from 0 to 1. Well, set is going to correspond to j equals 1 and k equals 0. Toggle is going to be j equals 1 and k equals 1. So I'm willing to accept either a 1, 0 or a 1, 1. I'm willing to either set, that would be this one, the set would be a 1, 0, or I'm willing to toggle 1, 1. But that means that the first bit, the most significant bit, the j, has to be 1, but the second bit, the, the k, could be either value. So I'm going to call that a 1 don't care, a 1x. Reset slash toggle, this might be, for example, if you wanted to go from 1 to 0. This will work if we reset, that's a 0, 1, or if we toggle, that's a 1, 1. So that means that the, the k value must be 1, but the j value can be either 0 or 1. So we're going to call that x1. And then finally, set hold. That would be if you wanted the 1 to transition to a 1. The set corresponds to 1, 0. The hold corresponds to 0, 0. So the first bit, the j, we don't care. The second bit, the k, must be 0. So that's an x0. So now I've added another column to that, to that transition table that we saw before. Here you can see the four possible transitions. So here are the transitions that we might care about. The, the ways in which each of those can happen, there are two in which, in which for each of them. And then what are the JK flip-flop inputs that would correspond to these conditions that would lead to these transitions? Now this table right here is extremely important. Uh, you're, you're definitely going to want to have that uh, for you or with you on the next exam. You're going to need to have it to be able to reference it while you're solving any sort of problems, any sort of design problems on the example problems or in, in the uh, in-class exercise or even pre-lab for the lab. These are all things that you're going to need to, to work on and you're going to need this table for all of them. It's probably one of the most important uh, you know, few square inches of, of the entire class. So that table is going to be useful to us as we're adding one more column to this, to this table. Remember that we've already seen the present values and the next values, the transitions on each bit that are necessary, and the conditions that will lead to those transitions. Now we have one more transformation to make, and that is to look up each condition in the table above and say, okay, reset, hold, that's a 0x. <clears throat> so I'm going to put a 0x right here. Set slash toggle, set slash toggle, that's a 1x. So I'm going to put a 1x right here. What we're doing here is we're, we're getting closer and closer and closer to the hardware. We think about what, what needs to be the present state and the next state, then think about what transitions need to take place on a bitwise level. Oh, but we're doing JK flip-flops, so let's think about what conditions on the flip-flops would have to happen. Now let's talk about individual signals on the flip-flops. So we're talking about the J and the K inputs. Okay, so we're almost done. We're almost to the place of, of uh, actually designing the hardware. Uh, this, these J and K columns are going to be essential to us in the next step, but I want to give you a break, make sure that you understand how to do this. So uh, if you would, please go complete the, the example problem on transitions, conditions, and inputs.